What's up, everybody? Time for another epic vlog, Grimsmo style. Me, John Grimsmo, you, audience viewer, Kern. Okay, so I got a little bit of prep. I got a little bit of pre stuff I gotta do. Um, I gotta keep making more foam like I did in the other video. I gotta test an active chip break toolpath on the threaded sleeve that I was making last week. Um, just so that I know the new, like the last code that I leave on there is good. And then I gotta switch to Norseman pivots cause Eric said we're all out. Um, so I gotta make Norseman pivots today, which shouldn't be that hard. Basically, I don't think I'm changing, I'm putting in like one tool and then testing the code and dialing in tolerances. So that won't be that hard. And da uh, da 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 da, and then Kern. Kern, 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 Kern. I got some cool stuff to make today. On top of the filing cabinet here, this guy's been here for uh, two, three months now since we moved in. I mean, it's a, it's a little dirty for sure, but for the most part, this shop stays really clean because we have very little grinding going on. Just a little bit in the far corner, like where the router is and the, the belt grinder, the small one. Um, once we get dust filtration on those, then it's gonna be good. But now that like we have a whole front building for all the finishing stuff, for the tumbler, for the grinder, for all the dusty stuff, the sharpening, things like that, um, that dust doesn't enter the machine shop environment, which is awesome. You know what they say, happy birthday two times. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Leif B. I always use my son's name, Leif. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Fun fact about that. I saw a quick video by uh, the actor Terry Crews, and uh, he was saying, be unembarrassable, meaning don't worry about being embarrassed by stuff. And, I've grown up my whole life being worried about being embarrassed by stuff. But I heard this just the other day and I was like, what a good perspective of not being afraid of being embarrassed, singing happy birthday out loud like a goofball. I mean, being a dad and being Mr. Goofball Pants has certainly helped um, extend my goofiness, but I like that. Be unembarrassable. It's pretty good advice. Okay. Maury is doing a spindle warm-up right now because I know that program doing the foam cranks it right up to 12,000 RPM. So I want to, the spindle warm-up goes like, I don't know, 2,000 RPM, 4,000 RPM for like a minute or two each, 6,000 RPM, eight, da, 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 all the way to 12. Um, so that gets the spindle all nice and juicy. It makes it nice. Um, okay, let's turn on the tornos. Test out that new code. Now I've got happy birthday stuck in my head, as I always do now. So right where we left it last time, thing half full, chips there, chips there, machine in crash position, not a big deal. So I should be able to go hand wheel, Z4, speed, and come on back. Oh, mama, this is not good. It's not terrible, but it's not good. Ugh. So on this machine, you may wonder, where do all the chips go? Well, for the most part, they go down. They could also go down this way and down this way and underneath. And then they go into this chip area right here. So let me pull off the cover. Oh, no. Side note, I don't think I have shown properly the stainless steel drip tray that we had custom fabricated. So good, oh my goodness. The machine needs to come with this. And it is actually an option that nobody told me about. Tornos makes their own version, but stainless steel, um, our buddy over at Combat Combat Beads, Keith, um, bent it, he works at the sheet metal shop, so he bent it, he welded it, he bent a little lip into the front so that we can roll out the um, coolant tank. So, so good. I mean, 
you can see right under there how much oil is already accumulating and that's easy to clean up now. So anyway, uh, yeah, so take out the cover thing, just mount it right there. And this guy is full of chips, so full. So it comes with a little scraper, so I'm gonna get my bucket and, uh, and scrape away. Got the Tornos running more threaded sleeves. Got the Mori running foam. Um, the active chip breaker where it pecks away and makes a shorter chip instead of one long, long, long chip. Um, seems to be working good. I wanna run you know, 10, 20, 30 parts and then look at the chips after I've cleaned out the chip bin. I can look at them, see if they're long and stringy. They should be really good right now. Uh, it did change the tolerance of that tool and the way that it leaves material on the part because I have to I'm roughing it out with that active chip breaker and then I'm leaving like five or ten thou I think ten thou to do a finish pass so I had to comp that a little bit um, but yeah it's going really good going good so let's turn that on right. listen to that 42,000 rpm during spindle warm-up uh, it sounds like an angry bumblebee. 42,000. So we epoxy coated these floors a few months ago and a really white, light uh, gray color, Arctic gray, they call it. Um, so I'm in the Kern cell right now, and I just wanted to point out, this is kind of a, I wouldn't call it a high traffic area, but this is where my chair rolls around, my feet are here scuffing around. I don't sweep often, like often enough. And you can see just all the little micro scratches that happen when there's dirt and grit on the ground and your feet are just here going like this all day. Um, so just something to keep in mind, it's, it's only a problem in the, in the high wear areas. Like, not that big of a problem out here, really. A couple scuffs, but you know, this is where people are walking by, but it's not super high traffic. And then like in the mill, we got these uh, gray mats from Uline, which are awesome to stand on. We have a little one under the Kern and a little one under the Swiss as well. Um, but yeah, just something I got to keep in mind of is sweep here often so that that doesn't get worse after three years. Yeah. yeah. Going up one of those big megas up there, and the entire drive. take a quick zip out to Prax Air to get some liquid nitrogen for our heat treating setup. So we're good now. It was getting low. Rule number one, don't kern on an empty stomach. Okay. First thing we got to do, I got all my code ready. Well, I got to pick out the tools that I need. I got to get them. I got to hold the holders in my hand and I got to put them together using the Rego Fix unit over there. And I gotta make sure that this actual stick out of the tool and the stick out that Fusion thinks it is, is the same. Let's go do that. Well, I've been up to all kinds of stuff in the past probably five hours that I haven't filmed anything. Um, okay, so I did decide I'm going to organize the entire tool rack by category of end mills. So ball mills will go from here to here. Flat end mills will go from here to here. Thread mills will go from here to here. So I'm... Uh, kind of re-strategizing how I'm going to organize these. So I'm taking this one and I got some drill bits, I got some flat end mills, I got some ball mills. Um, let's go to the Regal Fix machine and I'll show you that. So over here 
is where we're hiding all the goodies. Here's where we have all the Regofix holders and all the Regofix PG collets. This is a boatload of stuff. All the extra Aroa pallets that are going to go in the pallet changer. Yeah. And then here's the Regofix power grip machine. So I'm going to show you guys how this works. Already, so I went through Fusion and I made myself a list of every tool, number, what it is, um, what the stick out is going to be. So for example, this is your stick out. This is from the call it face, the nut face to the end of the tool. And in this case, it is roughly uh, 1.806 inches. Fusion has to know what's actually going on so that if you're going in a hole, you know exactly how far you can go before the simulation shows that you'll crash. So I'm writing down 0.75. So when I put it in, I'm actually adjusting it to be 0.75 out or whatever it needs to be. So in order to remove these uh, ER60 nuts, I had to make, hang on, there we go. I had to make some carve smart soft jaws for this orange vise that I have on the bench, on the shelf, um, so that it'll actually grip, sorry, so that it'll actually grip onto it when the vise pinches and then I can get torque on this guy. I also made uh, however many threaded sleeves that is. What did I write down? 64. 64 of those, doing pretty good with only eight scrap. Not so bad. And uh, these are my tes testing pivots so far. They're mostly fine, it's just that face that I'm not happy with. I wish I could show you more current stuff, but I got otherwise busy with the Tornos, uh, changing it over and making these Norseman pivot screws, pivots that go in the Norseman knife. Um, yeah, the setup, the changeover was not that long, didn't take that long. Now I'm just like super fine tuning. And, uh, you know, but I'm not changing anything, I'm just tweaking tolerances and uh, surface finish is what I'm really working on right now. I'm working on the surface finish of that face, it's got to be perfect. Um, let me show you actually, show you what it's like when it's not perfect. Eric sent me this picture the other day. So he puts them in a fixture and he tumbles them. And you see the ring that goes around like halfway, halfway down the face? Uh, that doesn't tumble out, so that's garbage. So I gave him pivots that had that problem, but I couldn't see it because, uh, well, when it comes off the machine, it's all shiny. So what I'm doing is I'm using the stones that I showed you guys in the last video, the kinetic precision stones, and I'm taking the pivot and I'm, I'm verifying the flatness of it by just lapping it, flat lapping it on the surface and then looking under the microscope and seeing where the ring is going and, and what's going on and what changing the insert does to uh, give me a better finish or not, slower, faster, one cut, two cuts, more meat, less meat, um, lots of variables in one stupid little facing pass. But they gotta end up looking perfect. Cause if not, it's not full Grimsmo. And I mean, we take this seriously. So that's what I've been up to. It's late, it's already like nine o'clock. Um, I probably don't have much left in the tank here. I need to go home and have dinner and then Oh, another day without making a chip on the Kern. I'm actually sad. But last thing I have to do is, as I was starting, um, set up the tools, run the code through Camplete, and then load the material on the vise, and then load and go. And uh, shouldn't take that long. But 
like everything, I'll teach you guys John's rule of pie. 3.14, not apple pie. Mm, apple pie, I'm so hungry right now. John's rule of pie is everything will take 3.14 times longer than I think it will, and it'll often cost that much more than I think it will too. So, I mean, because I know what it takes to get from A to B, the broad strokes, but it's all these little minor details that I, I don't think about in my time calculation. So I'm like, oh yeah, it won't take that long to set up the tools and run through Camp Lead. That's like minutes. It's probably hours. So anyway, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.